Now, Sugar Crinkles, the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet, is proud to present Gunsmoke. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun smoke. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Take it easy, Mom. You know your young folks are going to eat when you give them sugar crinkles for breakfast. Yes, boys and girls love sugar crinkles. And no wonder, it's the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet. Makes breakfast more fun than a circus. Now, the reason sugar crinkles suit your folks to a T is this. Some sugar-coated cereals they've tried seem too sweet. Others don't seem sweet enough. But when they dip their first spoonful of sugar crinkles, mmm, they've discovered a sugar-coated cereal that's just right sweet. And say those young folks of yours love to dip into the pack and eat sugar crinkles as a snack, too. So better get several packages. And now, gun smoke. Starring William Conrad. Surely you're not Marshal Dillon. Well, no, surely I ain't, mister. Then please find him for me. He's busy. All right, I'll wait. Sure. You wait. Good heavens, man. You like it? No. Then listen to this one. Yes, sir? Put that comb away. I can hear it clear out back. Oh, well, all right, sir. I'll go out back and play it. But if I can hear it from there, I can hear it from here. All right, Mr. Dillon, if you feel that way, I won't play it at all. Nowhere. Good. Marshal Dillon. <sighs> yeah. I'm Philip Locke from Philadelphia. I arrived on the Santa Fe this morning. Now you're a long way from home, Mr. Locke. Unfortunately, Yes. But I came here for a purpose, Marshal. Oh, and what's that? I'm looking for someone. A girl, as a matter of fact. Well, there's lots of girls in Dodge. You shouldn't have much trouble. If you please. Shut up, Chester. Yes, sir. This girl wrote her mother in Philadelphia that she was teaching school here, Marshal. However, she's never been heard of at the school. Well, maybe she's moved on somewhere. But they say she was never at the school. I'm afraid something's happened to her. Well, a lot of things can happen to people out here. That's precisely why I've come to you. I want you to find her immediately. <clears throat> You're not in Philadelphia, Mr. Locke. But I'll keep an eye open for her if you'll tell me your name and what she looks like. She's about five feet four, and she's blonde. A very pretty girl. Uh -huh. Her name is Laura Simmons. Laura Simmons? Yes, do you know her? Uh, no, 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 he doesn't know her. Neither do I. But uh, I'll see what I can find out for you, Mr. Locke. Wh where are you staying? At the Dodge House, and I must say I've been in better hotels. Well, bad as it is, you wait there, huh? I'll come to you if I have any news. It's most urgent that I find her at once, Marshal. Uh, sure. Good day. Oh, 
Marshal Dillon. Hello, Laura. Well, uh, come in, Marshal. Come on in. Thank you. Hello, Matt. Uh, oh, oh, Kitty, uh, I didn't expect to find you here. No, this is Laura's room, not mine. How'd you know I lived here, Marshal? You've never been here before. Well, I asked Sam downstairs. It's a wonder he told you. I think Sam's sweet on Laura. <laughs> Kitty. Well, I do. You two can gossip about all that later, huh? Right now, I've got some news for you, Laura. You have? Yeah, there's a man here looking for you. His name is Philip Locke. Philip? Hmm. Then Dodge, oh no. I figured it might be bad news. Well, I can't have him find me here. Well, he went to the schoolhouse first. And then I told him you'd probably moved on, but uh, he still thinks you're here somewhere. Well, I wrote Mother I was teaching school. He must have gone to see her. Well, if you don't want to see him, honey, you don't have to. I can't see him. I can't have him know I work in a, a saloon. It's nothing to be ashamed of. I know, but... Well, you see, I... I was engaged to Philip once, before I left Philadelphia. We were about to be married when his family found out that my father had been a riverboat captain. I, I should have told them before, I guess, but... Well, anyway, they called off the wedding, and I was so ashamed I ran away. Came out here finally. What about Philip? What'd he do? <laughs> the Locks are very aristocratic family, Kitty. I guess he had to do what they wanted. Not much of a man, if you ask me. Aristocrat or not. I was in love with him. And I think he was with me. Are you still? I don't know. How can I know? But he mustn't find me here. This is exactly the sort of life they said I was best suited for. His mother herself told me so. I've no nicer people than that on canal boats. I've got to hide somewhere. He'll go back and tell my mother, and it'd just break her heart. I, I, I just can't face any of it. Uh, look, Laura, why don't you go out to Ma Riley's until he leaves town, huh? She'll be glad for a little company. That's a wonderful idea, Matt. Come on, honey, I'll take you out myself. It's only a few miles. You're very kind. You might kind of spook him back to Philadelphia, Matt. <laughs> well, I'll try, Kitty. <laughs> Mighty warm beer for a nickel. I paid for that beer, Doc. I know, and I thank you for it, Chester, but I hate to see you not get your money's worth. Oh, well, get it. When you decide it's time to buy us a beer... Oh, I'll buy, I'll buy. It's almost time, Doc. Sure, it's a good thing. Oh, well, tell me, Matt, is Laura still out at the uh, Riley place? You're shying away from the problem. But anyway, she's there. Locke isn't likely to leave town this soon. I saw him last night, and I told him I'd heard Laura had gone to Denver. Ah, uh, did he believe you? I don't think so. But I warned Sam to tell him the same thing in case he came snooping around here. Ah, uh, oh, it's a sad story. Poor girl. Well, she's better off without the likes of him, if you ask me. Women are strange, Chester. They fall in love, and that's that. I sometimes wonder if it has anything at all to do with a particular man. Why, of course it has, Doc. Oh, I remember what a little Kyle girl told me once. She said, Chester, she said... I didn't know you spoke Kiowa, Chester. Well, I don't exactly. We used a kind of a sign language, you know. Yeah, I can guess. Uh-oh, oh, oh, oh. Who's this? Marshal Dillon? Uh, hello, Locke. I want to talk to you, Marshal. Uh, you've met Chester here, and this is Doc Adams, Philip Locke. Hello. Yeah, How do you do? Marshal, I think you lied to me about Laura. Oh, is that so? It most certainly is. There's something mighty strange going on here, and I think you're mixed up in it. Now look, maybe Laura doesn't want to see you, if you thought of that. I'm going to see her if I have to kill you to do it. Kill me? Mister, you ain't even wearing a gun. I don't have to. What do you mean? I've hired a man who'll shoot anybody I say for $500. Ah, Philadelphia must be quite a town. 
You have until this time tomorrow to produce it, Marshal. And remember, I'm a man of my word. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you are. Well, of all the nimby nambies. Uh, he's probably one of those who hired someone to fight in the war for him, Doc. It's all he knows. Look, Mr. Dillon, he's talking to Pete Noonan at the bar there. Pete Noonan? Is that his gunman? Well, looks like it. And of all the evil, no good, drunken crooks, he ain't even much of a gunman. No. I always took Pete Noonan to be a little off in the head. He is, Doc. You never know what Noonan might do. He isn't like other men. That's what makes him really dangerous. Mother, it does your heart good, I know, when your young folks eat all of their breakfast cereal. That's why I'm so happy to tell you about new Sugar Crinkles. Sugar Crinkles, you know, is the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet. Crisp golden nuggets of sugar-coated rice. They make breakfast more fun than a circus. Why, young folks love Sugar Crinkles so much, they disappear like magic. Now, you've had experience with sugar-coated cereals that seem too sweet to you, and others that just don't seem sweet enough to the youngsters. Well, what a wonderful surprise sugar crinkles will be to your whole family. For new sugar crinkles really are just right sweet. Remember, sugar crinkles make great snacks, too. Better get several packages. For your breakfast or a snack, you love sugar crinkles. Sugar crinkles can't be beat. Sugar rice cream that's just right sweet. With milk for a breakfast joy. As a snack from the pack, oh boy! Can't be beat, just right sweet, sugar crinkles, good to eat. Now back to gun smoke. Philip Locke first hit Dodge looking for Laura. I didn't think he'd cause any real trouble. I felt sorry for her, of course, but I wasn't hired to settle love affairs, good or bad. And it wasn't until he hired Pete Noonan for a gunman that I began to get worried. Noonan was off in the head and about as predictable as a locoed steer. With him around, it made for a bad situation. But there was nothing I could do except wait and see what happened. Locke had given me 24 hours to produce Laura. It was getting close to the deadline when I went over to the Texas Trail. I saw her this morning, Matt, but she didn't say much about anything. The poor kid. Well, she can't stay there forever, and Locke hasn't shown any signs of leaving. Maybe she ought to go on to Pueblo or Santa Fe or something. Give her time, Matt. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I got nothing to do with it. Uh, Kitty. Oh, you too, Marshal. Oh, what is it, Sam? Uh... One out back, both of you. Huh? What for? You'll see. I gotta go take care of the bar. Sam must be drunk. No, he's sober. Come on, let's have a look. All right. I still say he's drunk. Oh, Sam doesn't drink his own liquor. I don't blame him. I wish I didn't have to. You don't. I wouldn't if I lived on a little ranch somewhere, Matt. Had chickens and things. Uh, Sam's liquor isn't that bad, Kitty. Laura, what are you doing here? I made up my mind. Hello, Marshal. Laura? I didn't want to go inside just yet, so I've been sitting out here talking to Sam. You mean you're coming back to work? I've been thinking a lot about everything, and I'm going to face it out. No matter what anybody says. Are you sure you're right, honey? There isn't any other way to do it. Philip came here because he wants me back, and I won't lie to him. Well, I guess it's up to you. Where do you want to talk to him? Marshal... Would you find him and bring him here? Out here? No, just take him to the bar inside. I'll meet him there. This is a curious place to meet her. Uh, uh, Sam. Hmm? 
Mm-hmm. Bring us a drink, huh? Sure, Marshal. We'll wait here. She'll be along. Well, Laura always was rather different. Here you are, gentlemen. Oh, thank you, sir. Good evening, Marshal. Laura. Hello, Philip. Laura, that dress. You like it? What are you doing here? If you'll buy me a drink, Philip, I'll tell you. A drink? Of course. This is how I earn my living, Philip. You work here? Yes. Now, will you buy me a drink to start with? No. No, no. (laughs) Oh, never mind him, Laura. He don't mean nothing. He'll get used to it. Oh, don't say. Oh, no, it's just like what his mother said about me. It's true. Don't... Philadelphia. Well, what do they know in Philadelphia? <laughs> Lace on their pants. Here, Laura. Hey, have a drink, huh? Thanks, Marshal. I need it. Now, why don't you go home, huh? I'll get Kitty to take you. All right. Wait. Laura? Yes, Philip? Laura, I can't leave. I started to, but I can't. I came to find you, and I'm going to take you back with me. You are? Yes. This is quite a shock to me, of course, seeing you here in this place, but I can forget about that. I'll try, Laura. Will you, Philip? Yes, I promise. And we'll never mention it, ever. To your family, you mean? To anyone. It'll be a secret. It will? Always. If nobody knows, perhaps it won't matter. I'm not sure, Philip. I think it'll always matter. To me... I don't understand. Hmm. You wouldn't understand, mister. Laura, let's get out of here while we can talk. No. What? You heard her. She don't want to go. Will you keep out of this, Bartender? No, I won't. What kind of a man are you anyways? This little girl's done nothing to be ashamed of except earn her living, which is probably more than you've ever done. What makes you think you're good enough to judge her anyway? That's enough. You'll try to forget about it. You ever think of anybody but yourself? You're no good, mister. Laurie here's worth a hundred like you. I'm proud of her. I don't care what she's done or, or who knows it. You're proud of me, sir? Of course I am, Laura. I won't hear any more of this. Are you coming, Laura? Oh, tell him, Laurie. Go on, tell him. Well? No, Philip. I'm not coming. I'm going to stay here. Mister, you heard her. Now get out before I break a bottle over your head. Goodbye, Laura. And you, bartender, you'll die for this. Don't try that, Locke. Keep Noonan out of this. Nobody tells me what to do, Marshal. Noonan? What's Noonan got to do with this? Locke's hired Noonan's gun. Oh, no. Well, he'll kill you, Sam. Uh, That Noonan, he's crazy enough, too. Yeah. He is, Sam. What is it, Chester? I've been waiting outside, like you said. Well, why aren't you there now? Well, because he's coming, sir, right up Front Street. Noonan? Yes, sir. He's alone, though. Yeah, I figured he would be. All right, Chester, after he comes, keep an eye on the door. Huh? Yes, sir. Sam. Well, what did you have, Marshal? Noonan will be here in a minute. Get out of sight. Well, I ain't afraid of you him. You heard me. Now get out of sight. Okay, Marshal. I come for Sam. Where is he? What do you want him for, Nolan? Well, I've been paid to shoot him. That's what for. 
You want to hang, Noonan? <laughs> I was born to hang. Where is he? Look, I'm going to throw you in jail for a couple of days. Maybe things will be clearer to you then. Come on, huh? No, Marshal. Don't do that. i got to earn my $500. All right. But you'll have to shoot it out with me first. With you? What you got to do with it? I, I want nothing to do with you. There's a law against murder, Nolan. Well, I know that. Then what makes you think you can shoot Sam and get away with it? Well, I got $500. Right here in my pocket. Want to see it? Look, Noonan, see if you can understand this. Either you take your money and you get out of Dodge, or you're going to jail. I ain't going to jail. You want to draw on me? I'm no fool. All right, then get out. Fast. Now go on. Move. You don't leave a man much choice, Marshal. Guess I'll have to go. Bye. So long. <laughs> well, you sure got rid of him, Marshal. Well, I hope so. But he wouldn't have had much of a chance at you anyway. What? <laughs> Look at Laura there. I wouldn't have missed him, Sam. Even if he had got the marshal. Well, I'll be it. Laurie, where'd you get that shotgun? It's yours. The one you keep upstairs, I borrowed it. <laughs> There's blood in this girl, Sam. Did she ever tell you her father was a riverboat captain? <laughs> well, I'll... Marshal, huh? I I'm closing bar. You have to do your drinking somewhere else tonight. <laughs> It'll be a pleasure, <laughs> Sam. Yeah. Come on, Laurie, I, I, I want to hear more about your old man. Sure, Sam. Sure. In just a moment, we'll tell you about next week's adventure on Gunsmoke. You know, what you are tomorrow depends on what you eat today. So, Mother, be sure the big and little Indians at your house always eat a good breakfast. And tell me, what could be better for breakfast than Post Toasties? Post Toasties, you know, are the heap good cornflakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. But all of the talking in the world couldn't tell you how downright delicious Post Toasties are. You have to taste those crackling crisp flakes. Yes, you have to taste that sweet kernel corn flavor toasted. Then you know how perfectly wonderful breakfast can be. Put Post Toasties on your shopping list right now, Mother. Just watch how your whole tribe goes for them. Remember, Post Toasties are the heap good cornflakes.